Hello everyone, good evening. So again, hello to everybody and thank you for joining me tonight. Uh, we're starting a little bit late, however, uh, thank you very much for being here. Uh, again, tonight we're going to have your Facebook Live on nursing prioritization and delegation. And as usual, I am very happy that uh, we have very nice questions for tonight uh, for you to enjoy uh, answering. And please, uh, put your rationals when you're answering. Now, before anything else, I would like to introduce myself again. My name is Mr. Alan uh, Alan Matus, and I am a nurse educator. I have been teaching students for more than uh, 25 years, I guess, uh, teaching students and also how to pass the NCLEX. And also at this time, I am a nursing faculty in a nursing college. And at the same time, I am an author of the uh, a uh, book in Amazon that's a simple, fast, and easy NCLEX review. And then also, I am the president and the founder of Matus Nursing Review and Matus Nursing Review Online NCLEX Academy. So thank you very much, everybody, for being here. We have exciting topics for you tonight. Uh, the focus of topics for tonight will be all about uh, cancer nursing, or let's say oncology nursing. So we'll be discussing, uh, again, principles on prioritization and delegation. But again, uh, the... Uh, the goal for tonight is not to memorize the answers to the question, but to learn the principles again, okay? So before anything else, I would like to give a shout out to our uh, students for tonight who are here, okay? So we have uh, the following. So we have uh, new people, I guess, coming in tonight. So we have uh, Samira, so I think you are new. We also have uh, Pau Pau, so uh, thank you very much for being here tonight, okay? Then we also have um, K. Frey. Frey Tespa, uh, hello, welcome here also. Thank you very much for being here. And I hope that you, you will enjoy, uh, enjoy the session. I'm not sure if it's your first time tonight, okay? Uh, another one, we have Samira. Thank you very much also for being here. And uh, again, you know, uh, a lot of students have been really enjoying the, uh, the sessions that we have every Thursday. So uh, watch out for these sessions all the time, okay? So we also have, of course, the other people that we have seen here before. We have Renali also, okay? So um, good night, okay, or good evening. All right. So without further ado, I would like to uh, tell you, okay, what's going to be coming up in the next few uh, slides. So the first one that we have is going to be the, okay, our motivational photo of the week. So this uh, photo, okay, has been sent to us by our student, Benedicta. So she's reviewing right now for the NCLEX and um, she's studying uh, using our, of course, our, fl our flagship or major product, which is the, the NCLEX Success Workbook. So the NCLEX Success Workbook is making a big difference in the way that students study it makes the studying more engaging because you're not just watching the video, but you're actually really uh, writing down. And always remember that uh, part of the learning process also is that if you're actively studying, if you're using your senses, your visual, then you also have auditory and at the same time kinesthetic, you're writing also the information, then that really helps you in retaining the information, especially with writing because it connects the information to your brain and it's much easier to, uh, to, uh, to remember the concepts. And the good thing also about our, our NCLEX Success Workbook is the fact that um, it has exercises. It has exercises and students can uh, practice uh, answering some questions and at the same time, it's gonna be fill in the blanks and different types of exercises to make your learning more interactive. Okay, so thank you very much, Benedicta, for sending the photo. And also, I would like to encourage the other students of our academy, you know, uh, you can send me your photos, everybody, so that you can inspire your classmates how you are studying. And I always get so excited, and I really like it when I see you that you uh, send us your photo. So please send us your photo, and then we'll share that in Facebook, because uh, preparing for the NCLEX is not only all about uh, the ability to uh, retain information and and uh, prepare and uh, know the content, but also it's the uh, it's the uh, mental, okay, the mental preparation as well, okay. All right, so let's proceed to the next one. We have, okay. So we have 
Okay. So we also would like to uh, congratulate. Okay. So we have uh, Rich Rich Maki. So congratulations, Rich Rich Maki, for uh, for uh, passing your NCLEX. Okay. For passing the NCLEX RN. So Rich Rich is actually one of our winners for the 90-day online NCLEX uh, review. Okay. So she actually uh, won. Okay, uh, I think that was a few weeks ago. So she has been a part of this uh, um, big uh, community that we have, which is the Online NCLEX uh, Academy. Okay, so congratulations, Rich Rich, okay, for passing the NCLEX RM. I think that Rich Rich is also joining us tonight. I think she's in the comment section. So if you can please congratulate uh, Rich Rich for passing the NCLEX, everybody. Okay, so congratulate Rich Rich. And uh, if you need some tips, like for example, how did you prepare mentally for the NCLEX, then probably you can ask her. Okay, so congratulations again. All right, so now another uh, one tonight. Okay, another one is that we're gonna have your free 90 day online access. Okay, NCLEX review raffle. So, meaning that whoever joins tonight will be able to uh, join the raffle that, uh, and then the winner will be announced next week. So at the end of the session tonight, we will know who is going to win our raffle, okay? Uh, I think all of you are excited to know who won for tonight's uh, uh, raffle, okay? So we will be announcing the winner at the end of the session. Now, everybody also, can you please let me know where you're coming from? The ones who are new to this uh, to this uh, session, uh, can you please let us know where you're coming from? We would like to know, okay? So can you please know uh, which country or which state you are, um, are you joining? So we would like to know that because our online NCLEX Academy is actually international, okay? So, so we will announce the winner okay at the uh, end of the session okay so let's see okay so we have uh joyce thank you very much joyce okay so she's from the mom uh kingdom of saudi arabia so joyce is joining us tonight so that's on the other part of the world and that's really exciting so we also have angeline from dubai as well so thank you very much okay never been there but uh, hopefully i will be there one of these days it's in my bucket list and then also, of course, Alan Hill Torres. I know that you're from California. I know you, you're one of my students right now. Okay, Kenna is actually from Mississippi. Okay, so Mississippi, thank you for being here tonight. And I hope you will learn something. Okay, and Pau Pau is from San Jose, California. All right, so take note everybody that all of the videos that we have here, if you want the complete set, if you want the complete set, you can find them in the online NCLEX Academy, okay? At Matus Nursing Review, online NCLEX Academy. So you can go there and enroll in the course, and then you can have access to all of the videos that we have done in the past regarding this uh, this Facebook Live on Delegation and Prioritization, okay? So everybody, are you ready for our first question for tonight? Okay, so are you ready everyone for our first question for tonight? Okay. Can you say a very big yes, everyone? Because we're gonna have our first question now. So this is going to be prioritization question, and this will focus on uh, cancer nursing or oncology nursing, okay? All right, so let's have the question, everyone. So several clients who have been receiving chemotherapy treatments are waiting to be seen at the cancer clinic. Which of the following clients needs to be seen by the provider immediately? A, the 26-year-old client with bronchogenic carcinoma who had three episodes of vomiting after breakfast. B, the 54-year-old client with malignant melanoma who complains of malaise, fever, and sore throat. C, the 38-year-old client with osteogenic sarcoma who has constant bone pain that is worse at night. Or D, the 60-year-old client with advanced colon cancer who reports persistent rectal bleeding during defecation. Okay, so what's the answer to this question, everyone? Okay, so several clients who have been receiving chemotherapy treatments are waiting to be seen in the cancer clinic. 
which of the following clients need to be seen by the provider immediately okay is it a 26 year old client with bronchogenic carcinoma who had three episodes of vomiting after breakfast is it b the 54 year old client with malignant melanoma okay who complains of malaise fever and sore throat c the 38 year old client with osteogenic sarcoma who has constant bone pain that is worse at night or d the 60 year old client with advanced colon cancer who reports persistent rectal bleeding during defecation okay so let's see what's the answer so we have different answer for most people in the group okay so some people say airway is the priority okay that's why they chose that uh, question or the, that option okay so we also have okay some people answering letter b and some people answering letter a okay so which one do you think here is a patient who really needs uh, uh who is in immediate danger okay so which patient will that be and i will give you the answer in the next few minutes okay so let's see what is your answer everyone some people are saying there's infection going on some people are saying persistent bleeding is the answer i would like you to uh, really remember which patient is the most unstable patient here the most unstable patient the one who is going to mostly gonna suffer from complications or somebody who's going to be um, in a detrimental condition okay so let's see the answer to this question everyone okay so you have a b c and d so you can still change your answer if you want but uh, always remember when you answer questions like this you really have to read the question so these are patients who have been receiving chemotherapy treatments okay chemotherapy treatments so these are all cancer patients everybody waiting to be seen in the cancer clinic so you understood the stem okay you understood the stem and now you're going to use your process of elimination okay is it really someone who's vomiting three times is a patient unstable or is it someone with fever and sore throat okay or is it someone with bone pain or is it someone with persistent rectal bleeding so who do you think will be in a dangerous situation here okay so the answer to this question okay is going to be all right so the answer is going to be letter b everybody so b is the answer to this question the patient with malignant melanoma who complains of malaise fever and sore throat so all of these patients remember the situation here is this all of these patients are receiving chemotherapy okay chemotherapy so if you have to look at option a vomiting happens when you when the patient is taking chemotherapy and the vomiting there is three episodes okay after breakfast uh, is there any indication of deteriorating vital signs is there any indication of dehydration letter a doesn't say that it just says three episodes of vomiting and nothing more okay so that could be a priority since uh, nutrition or hydration level that's important if letter a says for example dehydrated so you have poor skin trigger dry mucous membranes uh, low blood pressure decreased level of consciousness then a could become a priority but at this time letter a doesn't really say that now if you look at letter c you have osteogenic sarcoma who has constant bone pain and that's the only clinical description that you have now, constant bone pain is actually part of the manifestation of bone cancer or osteogenic sarcoma. So uh, bone pain, that could be a priority. We need to manage that with pain medications. But then again, if you compare this with letter B, B is more serious, okay? Now, letter D, uh, you have advanced colon cancer who reports persistent rectal bleeding during defecation. So, letter d is also part of the manifestation of colon cancer you know rectal bleeding is part of the of the manifestation unless letter d um, 
there are certain phrases or words that let's say the patient is uh, is in a state of shock, very pale, for example, then letter D could be the answer. Now, why is letter B really the answer here? Because when you're taking chemotherapeutic agents, one of the major side effects of your chemotherapy, or let's say even the adverse reaction, that would be neutropenia or a decrease in the amount of white blood cell. So a granulocytosis or let's say neutropenia poses the patient to life-threatening infection. So malaise, fever, and sore throat definitely are signs of infection. And it's not part of the manifestation, it's a sign of complications. So if you're going to have to compare letter A and letter B, A is vomiting that is serious also, however, B is more complete. B is more complete. So letter B has fever and sore throat, which is really a risk for infection, okay? Or actually infection is already happening in letter B. Now, when you have letter D, letter D is your... Um, One moment. Okay. I found this on the web for also on letter B. Is uh, letter D celebrity is... Has a fever and sore throat, which is really a risk for Okay, infection. so that's uh, actually... Out. That's actually my my Amazon here in the in the room, but anyway, in the office. But anyway, everybody. So, the sixty year old client with advanced colon cancer, okay, who reports persistent rectal bleeding during defecation, is not as serious as compared to someone with infection. Everyone, okay. Now we still have to look at rectal bleeding. Definitely find out more other information if your patient is having deteriorating vital signs, uh, what are the lab values, for example. But however, B is the more complete. It has, uh, it has words and indications that it is more serious. So infection is happening there. That's why letter B is the answer, everyone. Okay, so that's the answer, everybody. Okay, so let's go now to your le uh, number two question for tonight. So I hope you got the question right, everyone. Okay, if not, then just uh, just think of it as a learning opportunity so that when you take your NCLEX later on, you don't commit mis the same mistakes, okay? And look at the other answers of your classmates because that helps you also what they are thinking during that time, okay? When you answer together and then you see the rationals of your classmates, that helps you develop metacognition, which is basically thinking about your thinking and it helps you develop your critical thinking when you see other students answering. And that is what is unique with this session, okay? So number two, everybody. So we have now number two. This is going to be a little bit challenging because this is going to be labs. So what I would like you to do is to slow down a little bit and review the labs, everyone, and then you make a decision based on what's in the labs okay so let's have your labs everybody so the nurse receives the laboratory result of a client with acute lymphocytic leukemia and notes the following data wbc is 9000 platelet count is 50000 rbc is 5 million cells hemoglobin is 14 grams bun is 27 milligrams serum creatinine is 1 and uric acid is 10 so which of the following items is the priority nursing action based on these results? A. Place the client on reverse isolation. B. Initiate bleeding precautions. C. Obtain an order for intravenous fluids. Or D. Measure the urine output within the shift. Okay. So what do you think is the answer? Again, you have laboratory results of a client with acute lymphocytic leukemia okay and notes the following data or results okay so number one uh, that would be wbc 9000 platelet is 50,000 rbc is 5 hemoglobin is 14 the bun is 27 serum creatinine is 1 and then you have your uric acid which is 10 so which of the following items is the priority nursing action based on these results are you going to place the patient on reverse isolation are you going to place the client on bleeding precaution? Are you going to obtain an order for IV fluids or literally measure the urine output? So, okay. So put your answers, everybody. So in answering this question, it's very important to look at the labs and really analyze them. Okay, analyze them and find out if they are normal or abnormal. Are they high? Are they low? 
and what does it mean? And then you have to go back to the stem of the question. Look at your client, you know, what's going on with that client. So that is a client with acute lymphocytic leukemia. And then remember that you need to remember your normal values before taking the NCLEX. That is highly important. Now, okay, so you have all of those lab values. You have to find out which ones are abnormal. All of them could be abnormal, but still you have to prioritize what is the most important lab value or critical value that you need to report, okay? So you may have several abnormal lab values there, but what do you think is the priority, okay? After reading all the lab values, okay? So which one is abnormal? So at this point in time, I don't have to, uh, I don't have to remind everybody about the lab values because it is given that when you take your NCLEX examination, all of you are supposed to memorize your lab values and then really understand how to interpret your lab values and what they represent, okay? Lab values or laboratory value and interpretation is the uh, core of our nursing practice. It is something that we deal with every day. And definitely when you take your NCLEX, NCLEX is replete with questions about uh, laboratory values and then your nursing action okay so that's why it's really very important so are you excited for the answer to this question everyone okay so let's see what's the answer to this question can all of you rationalize the reason okay why you pick a certain answer okay the answer to the question everyone is going to be all right so it's going to be letter b everybody okay so the first priority here is going to be initiating bleeding precaution everyone now wbc is 9000 you should remember that your normal wbc is 5000 to 10000 so when you have these kinds of questions in the NCLEX, you have to slow down don't rush you really have to interpret each lab because you might get confused so wbc is fine okay letter b is 50,000 so what is the normal platelet count it's 150,000 to let's say 400,000 something or 450,000 in some other resources but basically in the NCLEX when it comes to lab labs usually if they're abnormal they're really very abnormal so that you know that they're critical so platelet count is 50,000 and this is the level that makes the patient prone to bleeding so it is abnormal your rbc is five and that is normal and even if the client is having a little bit of anemia it may not be that serious or life-threatening hemoglobin is 14 and that is normal your uh, bun is 27 which is a little bit high okay so that is concerning your bun is 27 however between your platelet count that is low and your bun that is 27 which one comes first which one is your priority your serum creatinine is one which is considered to be normal and your uric acid is a little bit high it's actually 10 so maybe gout is happening there and usually uric acid when it's uh, elevated it could be a side effect of chemotherapy however if you have to look at uric acid which is high bun which is high and platelet that is low which one do you think is a priority is it the is it the potential for bleeding okay so for low platelet that is something that we need to address we need to initiate bleeding precautions and then at the same time we may have to contact the physician in order to have platelet transfusion okay so a placing the client on reverse isolation that is something that we do for those with neutropenia a granulocytosis or leukopenia when they have low levels of wbc okay so be very careful uh just because you saw reverse isolation you're like oh i've always seen this reverse isolation is the answer no my point in this question why i created this question is because i want you to look at the situation and answer don't look at the options and answer something just because it looks familiar or you've heard about it no that is not what works in the NCLEX. in the NCLEX, you should answer what the question is asking okay letter c and letter d are not priorities letter b will your will be your priority everyone initiate bleeding precautions so you see um neutropenia or risk for infection is is a priority but in this situation it is not because the wbc is 9000 everyone okay so whoever got the correct answer everyone okay pat yourself on the back 
okay so uh, we have Lenny Wagner okay so you got the answer right congratulations okay and that's really very important guys these are priority questions in the NCLEX and you really need to know the correct answer so at the end of the night I would like to see who got four out of four for tonight's session everyone okay so Kikil Barker and um, hopefully you're really learning tonight everybody and that um, please let your friends know also about this session because it's going to help them a lot also in their preparation okay so we have a very good rational here by Renally so she said that risk of serious bleeding the normal value of your platelet is 150,000 to 450,000 okay so very good that's why letter B is the answer guys okay so always read the question and answer what the question is asking okay everyone so we will now have your delegation questions for tonight so are you going to are you ready for the next session everyone okay so again the focus of questions for tonight is all about oncology nursing or cancer nursing everybody okay so let's have your delegation question everybody okay so the registered nurse and unlicensed assisted personal care for a client with suspected lung carcinoma who just came in after a bronchoscopy procedure which of the following actions by the UAP requires intervention by the RN? Okay, by the RN. So this one, everyone, um, is a negative question. So when it's a negative question, you have to be very careful, okay? Because it's asking you actually something that is wrong, which is the answer. So meaning that all of these are being done by the UAP, but the RN should intervene on which action because they are actually wrong. So, is it A, placing the cybrils up as ordered, B, providing oral hygiene care, C, reassuring the client that coughing up a small amount of blood may occur, D, providing an emesis basin at the bedside, or E, offering sips of water to soothe the throat. So, this is a select all that apply question, everyone. Okay? All right. So, placing the clients, uh, the cybrils up as ordered, providing oral hygiene care, reassuring the client that coughing up a small amount of blood may occur, D, providing an emesis basin at the bedside, or E, offering sips of water to soothe the throat. So you have to remember what happens in bronchoscopy, everyone. Go back to your content. So we're going to have a scope inserted through the mouth, and then it goes down into the respiratory system, and it includes, uh, it includes definitely... Um, um, administration of uh, neck anesthesia that will numb the throat okay so what do you think here is going to be the answer okay and always remember for the uap the three letter s's okay so rich rich mackie actually told me that when she took the ankle and now she passed she always remembered the three letter s's so uap are supposed only to do uh tasks that are simple okay and routine Okay, simple and routine only, no complex tasks. So remember, so which one here is uh, should not be done by the UAP? It requires intervention by the RN, meaning that you're looking for something that the UAP should not be doing. The UAP should not be doing this. And you have to give a rational, everyone, for your answer. Okay, I would like to see your rational and I'll give a shout out to whoever gives the best rational for tonight. So write your rational, everyone, and we'll show to the group your answer, okay? Your rational, because that would really help everybody understand. So look at the answers of your classmates, but we need rational also for these questions, okay? So some people have finally decided you can actually also uh, uh, change your answers, okay? So again, go back to your content, everyone. Before you look at the options, you have to look at first what is bronchoscopy, what is the nursing care, or what are the nursing care actions after bronchoscopy. And then always remember for the UAP, you're not supposed to delegate. If you're the RN, do not delegate eat anything with evaluation, anything with assessment, and anything with teaching, okay? Teaching, all right? Or anything that requires explaining to the patient. Okay. Anything that is more of a higher level of nursing knowledge or complex uh, complex skill, okay, complex thought process, something that licensed nurses are only supposed to know and to uh, to uh, teach the patient. So do not uh, 
delegate, eat, evaluate, assess, and teach. Okay, so we have, um, okay, so the answer is going to be, all right, so the answer is going to be, let me see. So Michelle said, Michelle said, UAP cannot give medical advice. It's not within their scope of practice. Okay. All right. So, so let us see. My, my said, UAP is not supposed to do that because reassuring is supposed to be the responsibility of the RN. Okay. What are the other rationals that we have here? Okay. Um, okay. So UAP should not offer anything to the patient without consent from the nurse okay so you really have to look at the question everyone okay the answer to this question everybody is going to be all right so that would be letter c and letter e very good now before you look at your answers everyone you got it right you have to look at the situation again the situation is a patient what are the key words the key words would be lung carcinoma just came in just came in so this is a new patient just came in after a bronchoscopy procedure so meaning this is a patient who just came in fresh from bronchoscopy so um the answer is that received because we are assuring the client that coughing up a small amount of blood may occur that is actually the responsibility of what that is the responsibility of the registered nurse right of a licensed nurse because as nurses we all know that a common effect or occurrence after bronchoscopy due to the irritation of the throat is going to be a small amount of blood being coughed in the next uh, few hours or 24 hours and we have to let the patient know that that is to be expected unless there is severe oozing or massive bleeding then that's a different story okay but letter c is is a higher level of knowledge so that would be letter c reassuring that would be the licensed nurse now letter e offering sips of water to soothe the throat uh we cannot do that the uap is not supposed to offer sips of water uh water immediately after the procedure because you don't have the gag reflex yet and then without the gag reflex what's going to happen is um aspiration so we have to wait for the numbness to disappear before we offer fluids okay so probably we can have some gargles or some throat lozenges first but however offering sips of water should not be done okay unless the gag reflex has returned and you have to go back to the situation it says the patient just came in okay the this came in after bronchoscopy so the answer is going to be okay letter c and e so lisa jane mariana gomez said that do not give sips of water until the gag reflex is present so again go back before you look at the options everyone know what is bronchoscopy first okay remember what are some of the things you need to remember about the procedure everybody okay so checking the gag reflex is the responsibility of the licensed nurse as well so c and e for this question all right everyone are you ready for our last question for tonight i'm sorry to to have the last question for tonight i hope we can do this session like for 24 hours okay because you really uh what's this you really uh, learn a lot okay your thought process that's the most important thing my goal is to change the way you think okay and to really not just memorize but really apply your answers to the situation and always remember in the NCLEX you never step out or leave the NCLEX without answering on management of care or coordinated care because it's already embedded in the NCLEX for sure when you sit down for the NCLEX you'll be answering 10 questions five questions maybe or 15 questions on delegation and prioritization it's already given okay all right okay so the last question for tonight, everyone, delegation again, very direct to the point. So the registered nurse works together with the licensed practical nurse in caring for a female client with advanced cervical cancer who has been vomiting after receiving chemotherapy. So which of the following tasks should not be delegated to the LPN? A, administer on the Inceptron orally as ordered. B, assess the color of vomitus. C, evaluate the patient's response to antiemetics. Or D, place an emesis basin at the bedside. So which one should not be delegated to the LPN? 
A, administer, administer on the Nsetron, orally is ordered. B, assess the color of the vomit is, or C, evaluate the patient's response to antiemetics, or D, place an emesis basin at the bedside. So which one should not be delegated? So let's see your answer, everyone. What do you think is the best answer? Okay. So this is the last question for tonight. And then thank you very much again, everyone, for joining me here because uh, uh, we have been doing this session for a long time now, and I'm really very happy that all of you are enjoying the session. And some of you already passed the NCLEX examination, and I really hope that the others will do as well. Okay. So the answer is going to be letter. Let's see. Some people said A. Some people said C. Always remember, read the question carefully. The question is not, should not be delegated should not be delegated okay to the lpn so which one is not part of the scope or practice of the lpn okay all right okay all right so the answer to this question everyone okay the answer to this question everybody is going to be letter c very good so letter C is the answer to this question. So with letter C, evaluate the patient's response to antiemetics. We already know in the past that we have discussed this, evaluation is the role of the registered nurse. And I think some of you picked letter A. So letter A actually is an antiemetic. That's your Zofran, for example, the brand name. So A is an antiemetic, and that is a part of the responsibility or scope of practice of the LPN to give you oral medication. Uh, letter B, assess the color of the vomitus. Always remember that your LPNs can do specific assessments. So meaning that the LPNs can take note of the color of the vomitus and report that to the RN. Okay. If it's the first time that we have a patient who is vomiting and the patient needs to be checked, then of course, the person who needs to see the patient who just started vomiting, um, to do a comprehensive assessment or initial assessment that should be the RN, okay? However, just to check the color of the vomitus only, that would be uh, the, uh, the LPN can do that, which is called a specific assessment, okay? Now, letter D, placing an emesis basin at the bedside, that's okay. Although if we have a UAP, the UAP can also do that uh, to place an emesis basin at the bedside. So let us see is the best answer because evaluating the patient's response to antiemetics will be a responsibility of the RN and after evaluation of the patient's response to antiemetics and interventions, then the RN can revise the care plan. And I did tell you that last time that revision of the care plan, formulation, uh, creation of the care plan is the responsibility of your uh, RN, the comprehensive care plan. Okay, so thank you very much for that, everyone, for your rational. Okay, so, all right, so, okay, so before we end for tonight and before we know the winner, okay, of the 90-day uh, online NCLEX uh, access, um, I'm going to have a shout out a little bit about our program. Okay, so our program, again, is the most complete, innovative, and interactive online NCLEX review. So we offer a lot of value for students. And the goal definitely is to make your review simple, fast, and easy. So we have all the features of the program. You can watch the videos in multiple devices. And of course, you can have the NCLEX Access Workbook as well. So one of the things that we have now, uh, just an announcement, uh, we have the NCLEX Access Workbook. So we have changed some of the plans that we have our pricing. Now you can purchase the NCLEX Access Workbook separately. So meaning that when you buy the NCLEX Access Workbook, you can also enroll in the online academy to use it. So that is good because uh, we have different pricing that you can afford. So uh, you can now buy the NCLEX Access Workbook separately. So now uh, it's more affordable probably to some students and that is good. Okay. And uh, uh, everybody will be able to uh, avail the NCLEX Access Workbook now. Okay, so it's $94, okay, and 50 cents, like what we did before. We used to sell that. It's $94 and 50 cents is in our online NCLEX Academy. And of course, uh, if someone in the group is using the NCLEX Access Workbook, you can give a shout out that you like the, uh, the workbook. Okay, so, and then also in the next 24 hours in the comment section, 
I'll be posting fifty uh, percent uh, of code for our subscription plan. So right now we have changed the pricing, and our subscription plan right now is uh, for the whole year. Subscription online access only is somewhere in the four hundred something. So we'll be posting a discount code like fifty percent in the next twenty four hours after this ends, and uh, you can enroll. You know, instead of four hundred dollars for the whole year, you're gonna have only. Uh, at two hundred dollars or something okay and if you have any problem in using the code just let us know all right so 50 percent off we'll be putting that in the comment section in the next 24 hours and uh, the reason for that because you know the reason for that is because it was my birthday last week and i think that i need to pay forward a little bit okay so 50 percent off for our subscription plan everyone Okay, and we still do have live webinar classes every Tuesday and every Saturday as well. So check out www.matusnursingreviewacademy.com. Okay, then of course, uh, you all know that I have my book in Amazon and it's available in the Philippines and you can email that email if you want to purchase in the Philippines and also this in Amazon as well. Okay, so all right so at this uh, at this time uh, we're having a promo we're in i think it's gonna last until today or tomorrow i guess but whoever buys my book is going to have a free 30-day access okay free 30-day access so just send us email a proof of your receipt and we'll enroll you 30 days access well uh, if you buy my uh, paperback book the paperback not the kindle okay so that's it everybody so okay so um amazon can ship to ksa i guess you know but uh if you really want the book uh in ksa uh, just communicate with us uh, send us a message and we'll figure out how to do that okay so thank you very much michelle for uh purchasing the book today all right so okay so everyone are you ready for our winner for tonight okay but before that Atet Shoko Pascual said, thank you. We have learned so much today. God bless and stay safe, you all. Okay. So now let's uh, announce our winner for the raffle, everyone. Okay. So the raffle. So the one the one whose name appeared first during the raffle is, so are you ready for a winner, everybody? That is Atet Shoko Pascual. Yes. So I know that this person is winning tonight already. And this person is here. So congratulations, okay? At the Shoko Pascual, you, you have the 90-day uh, online access review. So congratulations. And then uh, you can transfer this also to another person. But also what you can do is to send us an email so that we can enroll you, okay? So congratulations for winning the 90-day. Uh, the 90-day program usually is around $100 or something. So uh, you're saving a lot of money, okay? So very good. And then we have Alan Hill Torres said, I love the book. It helps me every webinar class. Great job, sir. Very good. Thank you. Okay. So, all right. I don't really want to say this, but it's the end of the night, everyone. And I don't really want to say good night to everybody. But uh, uh, thank you very much, everybody. Stay safe. Uh, we have a heat wave going on in California. And please uh, share this with your friends. Let your friends know to attend the session every week because it will highly benefit them. All right. And thank you very much, everyone. And have a good night.